بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وقوتنا محمد عليه أفضل الصلاة وأزكى التسليم اللهم أعلمنا بما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزيرنا علما يا رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته everybody welcome to beginning classical Arabic Saturday morning and today also I remind you marks the first day where we are doing a um, our enrichment class, right, which will be at 12 p.m. after this class. We'll get a little bit of a break, and then we will do the enrichment class. Um, <clears throat> we've been talking about plurals. That's mostly what we've been going for. Um, and in a previous lesson, I had mentioned that there are certain phonetic patterns that are regular to constructing the jam'u taksir, the broken plural. Um, and we had not explored them very much, but uh, I made good on my word and I went and tracked down my notes from sort class, from morphology class. And so we're gonna take a brief excursion just to give you a couple tools when it comes to trying to anticipate and form the broken plural. So this is getting into uh, a little bit of morphology. So when it comes to um, broken plurals, there are two types. We have what's called See, I'm going to try to make a kind of like a chart here. Get this out of the way. Okay. So we have this. We're talking about the jam'u at taksir. Okay. And it's my fault. I've been slipping with the slides and providing information for slides, which I intend to get back on uh, in the coming weeks, inshallah, so that we can provide that for our students because that was very helpful. So jamr taksir, we recall that this is one of the three types of plural. There's the sound plural and the broken plural, right? And the sound plural has two categories, sound masculine plural and sound feminine plural. Well, the broken plural also has two categories. So these two categories are a little bit less important than knowing the two categories of sound plural. Why? Because the two categories of sound plural are extremely regular and predictable, right? They are things that are not necessarily tied to meaning, but they are manifest on the actual word. So when we take a word like Muslim and we want to know how do we make a plural, we know that we have to add un and muslima. We know that we have to add at, right? And so it's more about <clears throat> how the word will look and less about what it means. The different categories in jam'a taksir, in broken plural, is the opposite. It has more to do with what it means and a little bit less to do with the actual form it will take because there are more exceptions. And what we mean by that is that in Arabic, there are broken plurals that are used to refer to a number of things, and that number of things is between one and nine. Yes. So there is, and this is called jam'u al qilla. Literally, the plural of the few from qalil, right? Qaf lam lam means few with a shadda on the lamb, we could say is fewness or few. Jam'u al okay? And the other type of broken plural is called Jam'u al And you should recognize kathra from kathir, which means many.
Okay. So within these two categories of broken plural, okay, so okay, so what's the meaning of general general kethra? General kethra is basically ten and up. I'm gonna write the Arabic number. Ten plus. Okay. Now, why are these categories less essential to know than the other categories of sound plurals? Because these are not hard and fast rules. It is acceptable to use them interchangeably, right? You don't strictly have to use jamal qilla for something that's only between one and nine and number, and you have to use jamal kethra for something that's 10 and above. However, if you go into um, high level Arabic literature, into poetry, et cetera, et cetera, this is where this kind of comes into play. You will find that these things are heated um, more often than not. When they're not heated, often in poetry, at least it's intentional to kind of prove some sort of point or illustrate some sort of defiance of expectation or what was anticipated. Anyway, the other reason why this is not as important to know as our categories of uh, sound plural is that um, <clears throat> it is not it is much, much harder to, um, oh, okay, actually there's two more reasons. One of them is that not every word has both a jam'ul qilla and a jam'ul kathra. Some words, they only have one or the other. And so obviously you're going to use whichever plural it has, whether it's one through nine or whether it's above 10. Okay. <clears throat> and then the last reason why this is less important to, to know, so this kind of lesson is more for kind of students who are looking for something more challenging and advanced, is that um, it's a little bit less regular when it comes to the phonetic patterns and the phonetic patterns are much more sprawling. Okay. So let's, um, let's get into it a little bit. Between these two patterns. Okay. You're going to see why this is so, uh, vexing for, um, people to learn and to strictly adhere to. Between these two patterns, there are 27 different phonetic patterns of the broken plural. 27 compared to one <laughs> for the sound, the sound uh, masculine plural and one for the sound feminine plural. Okay, there's 27 phonetic patterns for the, uh, the broken plural. Splitting them up in between these two categories of jamal qilla and jamal kathra, we find that four of them, and they're the ones that we're going to look at today, four of them, look at me, I'm writing Ar uh, English numbers over here, I'm writing Arabic numbers over here, four of them belong to the jamal qilla, and the remaining 23 of them belong to jamal kathra. And of these general kathra, we can break them down into two further categories. There is a type of plural in Arabic that's known as the plural of the plural, right? Yes, it's possible to have a plural word pluralized a second time when you're trying to uh, communicate something that is exceedingly abundant, okay? So... When it comes to the typical patterns of Jamal Kathra, there are 16 of them out of these 20, 23. And when it comes to the, what's called Jamal Jamma, the plural of the plural, then there are seven phonetic patterns. We're talking about phonetic patterns. Okay. So essentially, if you're looking for a strategy for memorization and apprehension and retention, you want to focus in on these first because there's only four of them. Uh, and then these because there's only seven of them. And then if you really want to tackle the rest of them, you would move on to the 16 and break them down. Okay, let's look at these four today and then we'll get back to the book. 
right, so I don't want to spend all of our time doing this, but maybe for the next few lessons, I can just go into th these things a little bit because they'll help train your ear and they'll help show you that, yeah, there is some regularity to this thing that when we first learned it, it seemed like it was just completely irregular and nonsensical. Okay, so when it comes to the four patterns of Jamal Qilla, and strictly speaking, this is originally used for anything that is numbered one through nine. And we'll call them awzan, right? That's the plural of wazan, which is the term that's used in Arabic morphology for a, a phonetic pattern. Okay, we're going to bird's eye view it for a second. Number one, the first pattern we have is Afilatun. And we know that all phonetic patterns are always used with the verb fa'ala to demonstrate your default example. F I la. These are the key things, right? The, there is an ahamza attached to the, or added on, I should say, to the beginning of the word. The first letter of the root word has a sukun. The second letter of the, of the root word has a kesra. And the third letter of the root word has a fatah. Okay, we're going to get into examples and rules after. The second phonetic pattern of the jama taqsir in the jama qilla <clears throat> is af'ul so similarly it adds a hamza with a fatah in the beginning and it also has a sukun on the first root letter of the word but it's going to be different in that it has no tamar buta and it has a bomma on the middle of the root letters. The third pattern is af'al. So again, we have a hamza added to the beginning of the word. And again, we have the first true letter of the root word has a sukun, but this time we're adding an alif after the middle letter before the final letter of the root word and then finally that's supposed to be a rabia the final um phonetic pattern in the different phonetic patterns of the jamal qilla or jamal taqsir is fi'latun And if you like this sort of stuff, the patterns, the phonetic patterns, then you are really going to like morphology because studying morphology, sarf in Arabic, is all about the phonetic patterns. <laughs> you do, this is the kind of work that you do. So if, you're, you, if this is really boring to you, then maybe sarf isn't for you. But if this is really, really interesting to you, then there's, this is a whole section of study uh, of the Arabic language and one that I find fairly fascinating. Okay, <clears throat> can we think, Sister Masarrat, you're the only one with us today. Can you think of any words off the top of your head that are plural nouns that exist on any of these four patterns before we get into the rules for how to derive them? Just curious. Sorry. <laughs> uh... Uh, I'm a little lost. Um... Thank you for being honest with me. Okay. So maybe let me um, backtrack a little bit. What do we mean by a phonetic pattern? Okay. Let's take a word. Um, okay. Let's take ta'am. 
Ta'am means food, right? <clears throat> okay. It's a noun. Good. It's not a, a person. It does not refer to a person. This is singular. We want to make it plural. We know that we're going to be in broken plural territory. Okay. How do we know or how can we anticipate what the broken plural is going to be? Is there any possible way of doing that? Before this lesson, the answer was kind of like, no, or at least I hadn't shared with you any of the rules that would help you derive broken plurals. If you came, so if you came across a singular noun, you came across ta'am, you wanted to know the plural of it, you wouldn't be able to guess. You would have to go to a dictionary and look it up and like, oh, okay. And you would learn that it is at'ima. At'imatun. Now what I'm asking you is, does this word at'imatun correspond with any of these phonetic patterns, one through four? And the answer is, yes, it does. Look, it's number one. Af'ilatun. We have the Hamza added on in the beginning. Look at what, what has happened since the singular. The Hamza has been added on in the beginning. The second, the first true letter of the word, of the root word, gets a sukun. The second true letter of the root word gets an ayn. And then we have a tamar buta added on the end. The alif is not a part of the root word, right? So that's the idea behind what we're doing, okay? We're trying to look for patterns and we're trying to discern what goes where. Because somebody actually had asked in class, I was like, well, how do we tell what the, um, what's it gonna sound like? How do we tell if we come across a singular noun, what it's going to look like in the plural? Can we know, is it regular? And the answer is, well, yes, but it's complicated. Does that at least, clearly communicate the idea behind what we're doing? I understand the idea of patterns. Um, I think I'm a little confused because uh, I didn't understand what it meant by few and many. Um, yeah. And I don't understand what um, these patterns on the left, uh, on the right, you know, the one, two, three, four, yes. are these the patterns of the singular form? Good. These are these are patterns of the of the broken plural. Sorry for that um, not being clear. These are plural patterns. So what is the what is the singular? What is sorry? What would be the singular noun in this case? The singular noun is ba'am. Is the noun is the singular noun always ba'am? That's what I'm going to get to. That's okay. what I'm going to get to now. I was just trying to jog anyone, jog your brain and see if just off the top of your head, you could recognize any plural words that corresponded with these four uh, phonetic patterns. So yeah, I, no, I, I, I wasn't able to think, to be honest, because I was a little overwhelmed with, um, with the previous uh, screen and it sort of went a little fast. Um, so I was still trying to absorb that. And so my mind was um, very focused on trying to understand that foundation before coming here. So I was not trying to picture any now, to be honest. No worries. No worries. And thank you again for giving me feedback about that because the, the intent is that it's understood. Um, so essentially, essentially, um, I guess, uh, let me backtrack again a little bit. So in English, okay, plurals are very straightforward. If we have book, and we want to say, I have three of them. We simply add an S, books. And even if we go up to a million, it's still just going to be add an S, books, right? Our tools for pluralizing words are limited to the S. If we want to communicate something else in English, we need to use other words, like a ton of books, right? We use like um, possession-based 
phrases or things like that. In Arabic, there are ways of communicating the difference between three books and a hundred books without using, without saying the number. But depending on the phonetic pattern that you choose to pluralize the singular noun. Yes. Now, like I was trying to say, and I maybe said it too early, is that this does not apply to every noun. But many nouns will have multiple plural forms. Okay? And many nouns will have some plural forms that indicate that there are less than 10 of that item. And there are other plural forms that indicate that there are, or we're talking about more than 10. And does this apply to both sound and broken plural? No, this is only broken plural. Only broken plural. Okay. Only broken plural. Yep, broken plurals are the hard ones, right? So sound plurals are easy. That's why we kind of took them first. Broken plurals, I'm like, okay, okay, we'll delay, delay going into the philosophy of it until later, yeah? If you have three Muslims and 300 Muslims and 3 million Muslims, it's always Muslimun. Always the same. Muslimun, okay. Muslimun, Muslimun. However, if I have three pieces of bread versus 13 pieces of bread versus 100 pieces of bread, I could use three different plurals for each of those situations. Now, why I delayed teaching this, as I said in the beginning, first of all, it gets complicated, okay? 27 phonetic patterns is complicated and I don't expect anybody to be memorizing all 27 of them. And the second thing is that it's not a hard and fast rule, right? You don't have to use the plural form for three. You can use the plural form for 13 to refer to three of the same object. It's not wrong in the Arabic language. However, if you ever desire advanced study in Arabic, yes, you will find that in the higher echelons of the Arabic language, these rules are adhered to when it comes to the plural forms that indicate between one and nine, the plural forms that indicate uh, above 10, and then what's known as the plural of the plural, which refers to like a whole bunch. And it's not like a specific number, but it is supposed to emphasize um, that there are very, very many of them, okay? So that's the idea. <clears throat> now, I had broken it down the previous page into what's called general qilla and general kathra. Okay, so if we can reduce those just to two categories, general qilla are plural forms that, strictly speaking, refer to objects that are between one, uh, excuse me, two and nine, or we should technically say three and nine in number. That's what these are, all right? Between three and nine. These four right here. And the other category, the bigger category, is the Jamal Kethra, which, strictly speaking, refers to objects that are 10 and up. There are 23 different phonetic patterns for that category of Jamal Texia, of broken plural. So I'm not going to teach all those, especially not right now. But since there are only four, since there are only four of the Jamal Qilla, the type of plural pattern that strictly speaking refers to objects between three and nine in number, I figured it would be interesting to look at the patterns and see how we derive or how we get to these patterns from patterns in the singular because there are rules and you are able to derive them. You can, if you are so inclined, you could study these rules of morphology to the point where you could come across a singular noun that you do not know the plural for, 
and you could successfully and accurately derive the plural form from that noun. So that's the whole purpose behind this little. Group. I think I'm, I'm, I'm with you now. <laughs> with me? Sorry, no, I, I think I moved. Yeah, Thank you very much for uh, giving me your feedback. Okay, so let's erase this. And let's look into specifics. So we're only going to deal with these four plural forms, which are all forms that, strictly speaking, indicate objects between three and nine in number. They are ef'ila, like at'ima, ef'ul, ef'al, and fi'la, or fi'latun. And I'll give examples, but we'll see from the examples that we can identify patterns in the singular and get to these plural patterns from them. Okay, so let me try to make this into kind of like a chart. Better that I use the um, the straight line that they give me than try to draw a straight line myself because that will not go very well. Okay. Down this way. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so. When it comes to the first phonetic pattern, F -a -la -tun. F -a -la. Yep. What's that? Sorry. Uh, I think there's a word of ida, like. Uh... Ah, fa ida, fa ida tun, f ida. Very good. That's good. Let's see the the patterns, and we'll see what uh what matches up with them. So the first example we have is. Um, da -da 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 -da. I'll use the example. Okay, so maybe I should write it in English because I think that'll be a little bit. Okay, masculine nouns with a weak letter before the last letter. Okay, masculine nouns with a weak letter before the last letter. And it has four letters. Okay, so this would include our first example, like Ta'an. It has four letters. And the letter before the last letter is a weak letter. By weak letters, it's like Tajwi. Alif, Ya, Wow, Ta'an. Another example, the word for flatbread, Ravif. Raghif, Arghifa, Ta'an, Al-Ta'ima. We also have the word for pillars. Okay, so for uh, a pillar is Umud. And it becomes A'mida. A'mida. Okay, so you see how, and this is nice because it uses all three weak letters. Well, yeah. So all of these words, they're masculine. They have four letters. And the penultimate letter is a weak letter. Fuad. Fida. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Fida is not, I was thinking faida, but that's fawaid. Yeah, yeah. Fuad, fida. Ahsanti. That's that's fantastic. Okay, let's add that there. Fuad, for heart. Fida, hearts. Yes, fantastic. So now we see, look, you've got a pattern here. If you've got a masculine, four letter, there's three conditions. One, two, three. Masculine, four letters, weak letter as the second to last letter. The 
plural is, or an acceptable plural is af'ila. And that communicates something between three and nine. And it is permissible to use it for things that are more numerous than that. The second type of word that in this that goes to this plural pattern is any word on the phonetic pattern fa'al in the singular. Fa'al or fi'al. So and okay, so fa'al, fi'al, if okay, there's a, a, a further wrinkle here. If V, how can we put this? Um, if the last two letters are the same. Okay, so what we mean here is that, two, so this has two conditions. One is that it's on the pattern fi'al or fa'al, and the second that the ayn of the letter, meaning the middle letter of the root word and the last letter of the root word are the same. Example, example. So we have imam. Okay. Imam. It satisfies our two conditions here. It's on the phonetic pattern of fi'al, and the last two root letters are the same. Mim, mim. So the plural of imam is a'imma. A'imma. We add a hamza. There's the original hamza. There's the mim. And then a'im. The same thing for sinan. So that would be a sinna. Okay. And because in the plural form, you might be saying, wait a second, that's not really exactly on the pattern of afila. I would contend, yes, it is. It's just that the lamb and the ayn are the same letter. And so we have uh, a doubling. We make it into a shadda. Sinan, a sinna. Okay, that's enough for this one. So we have two patterns here in the singular. If you come across words like these or words like these, you know that you can derive the plural pattern from them, ef'ila. Okay, let's look at the next one, ef'ul. So ef'ul, the first type of singular word that goes to ef'ul is, it would be better if I listed the conditions one by one. Okay, so we have a three-letter word in the singular. Two, middle letter is not weak. Three, middle letter has sukun. Okay. So, oh. Um, so, and there is a fourth one there, and the fourth one is that it's on the wazan of fa'lun. Right, so if that is our, if that is our pattern in the singular, then we can derive a plural ethrul. Akinna, yes, very good, akinna. For this one, ethrila, akinna. So what we have here, uh, for example, we have shahr. The word shahr, which is month. What's the plural of month? Ashur. And this is actually a very useful example because shahr, shahrun, has a second plural, which indicates more than nine, which actually becomes very useful if you're talking to somebody 
if you stayed in a place for five months versus if you stayed in a place for 12 months. If you're communicating between three and nine months, you would use ashur. And if you were communicating more than that, then you would use a different plural, which we'll see later, shuhur. Shuhur. But we'll go to that later. Another example, and this is not as well known or used, is kelbun, dog. We're used to the plural kilab, which is technically indicates more than 10 dogs. If you wanted to be very, very strict and only indicate between three and nine dogs, you would use aklub. Aklub. Okay, the second type of word that goes to this type of plural, kind of I had no idea that it would take up this much time to go, to go over this list, but it is kind of uh, dense. Okay, is we have a feminine word with four letters. and uh, a weak letter before the last letter. So it's different from, up here we have masculine four letters, a weak letter before the last letter. It's the same exact conditions as the am and Larif and Umud and Fu'ad, except here it's feminine, okay? So we have example here, Vira'a. Um, Right, body parts that are there are two of them. Vira is arms. The plural ezro. We have anak. The neck, the scruff of the neck. Anuk. And finally, the plural of Yamin, Aymun. Now, keep in mind that words do, some words have more than one plural. And so we're only talking about these exact, um, these exact phonetic patterns. Okay, let's kind of, try to wrap up with these and we didn't even make it to the book today subhanallah but honestly it was monasib it was very fitting because we have yeah this is actually very interesting <laughs> Once, exactly uh, i mean the big it, it's very interesting the beginning was a bit uh, uh overwhelming but uh now it's very interesting alhamdulillah alhamdulillah yeah. that's, that's glad to hear i don't the last thing i want is to be going on and on about something that uh nobody is benefiting from but for me personally as an arabic language learner I wish that I had been introduced to morphology sooner. And I know that's a common complaint amongst students of knowledge because morphology enables you to organize in your mind um, the different phonetic patterns and break down something that seems like just this unmanageable mass of you know, broken plurals and actually break it down into smaller chunks, which then can be kind of analyzed and learned um, at whatever pace. Okay, so quickly, let's go through just a couple examples of the other two. So we have af'al. Um, there are two types of words that go down through this. So um, conditions. One, a three-letter word. That, two, is on the wazin that I'll write in a second. And three, um, weak middle letter. Any other examples? No, there's no. Uh, okay, okay, okay. On the wazen of, where are we at here? Ba'alun. Okay, so we see how sometimes with these, many of these conditions are the same, but they're just being exchanged or just a little bit different. Right. These two sets of conditions were very, very similar. The only difference was that this is for masculine nouns and this is for feminine nouns. Here we have three letters. It's on the wasn't 
but there's a weak middle letter. That's exactly like this type of word. Three letters, middle letter is not weak. Middle letter has a sukun, okay? Except with this example that this cannot, uh, this is a weak middle letter as opposed to the previous pattern where it, where it was not a weak middle letter. Okay, so for example, uh, bait, right? And this is a very helpful one because bait has two different plurals. One of them is this, uh, if we're talking about houses between three and nine houses, the proper plural is abyet, right? Whereas if we're talking more, buyut, which is a different uh, pattern of the plural. Uh, another one we have is bab, abweb, right? These are some very, very common words. Um, sebeb, cause. Or I'm sorry, that does not adhere to the to the pattern. I think that's a mistake here. Thob is the correct one. Sorry, I'm, my my notes are a little bit cramped. Thob, athweb. No, asbab is correct, right? Asbab. In the plural, the plural is asbab, so the plural is correct, but sebeb does not adhere to the, the condition. Um, like um, it's three letters, yes. It's on the wazin, it's not on the wazin fat with a, with a spoon in the middle. It has a fat in the middle. Um, and it does not have a weak middle letter. The middle letter is ba. So you're right, it is on the that plural, but. Um, it's misplaced in my notes here as under this particular singular pattern. Okay. And the second type of word that go that ends up in this type of plural, we have the conditions are. So wouldn't Anna come in this category? Sorry? Ana. Uh, Ana. Yeah. 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 It would be. It would be. And I think actually that that's coming right now. Yes, it is. Yes, here it is. Okay. So this is the second type of word. We have something that is made up of three letters. Um, and in the singular, it is simply not on the previous pattern, not on fa'lun. And I think this is where um, sebab is, is, is properly included, right? So sebab to asbab um, is one of them. Jamal, uh, ajmal, thamar, athmar, right? And then unuq, uh, a'na, yes. So this is exactly where it's written. So unuq. So this is a catch-all category. Like basically you see how the conditions are very, very sparse. Any three letter word in the singular that is not on the wasn fa'lun, meaning it does not have a sukun in the middle letter, then it can be pluralized onto af'al, asbab, a'nab, athmal, a'nab, etc., etc., etc. And there's many, many examples, but we're stretching over time here. So I'm just going to try to quickly refer to the last one. Okay. Uh, we have fi'latun. And this is um, an exception category. So in, in, in morphology, we have something that's called sama'i and qiyasi. So, Qiyasi is something where there's a rule. All of these are qiyasi. You learn the rule, you apply the rule. Sama'i is, that's just the way it is, right? It's like, that's the way it's heard. That's the way Arabs have used these words. And so it's just exceptions you have to memorize. There's no hard and fast rule for fi'latun, which is why we, we found a couple words in here. Uh, so for example, fityatun, right? That's one that we, we dealt with before. Right from uh, Fatah. 
and we have Ghilmatun from Ghulam. And we have Sheikhatun or Sheikhatun, which is one of the plurals of Sheikh. And Subyatun, uh, the last one will be Subyatun, which is Tobi, one of the plurals of Tobi. And as we said before, many of these words have other plurals, but those mm. other plural forms indicate more than 10, or they indicate 10 or more. So these plural forms, strictly speaking, indicate numbers between three and nine, although they can be used as languages. Wow, that took up all class. Any questions? Um, what's this word, shayma? Is that the mean? This one over here, this is supposed to be a kha. So it's shiha. Shiha oh. is one of the plurals of shay. Technically, oh. if you're speaking between three and nine shayuch and you want to impress your interlocutor, you can use shiha. And um, yes, that would be the most technically correct form. And the one below that, the one below the English is? Sorry? Yeah, that, what that was? Sibyatun, from Sabi. Sabi is a child. Usually um, it's used more in fifth discussion. Maybe you've heard of uh, Sibyan. Sibyan is the, um, is the more common plural, and that's one of the plurals that indicate more than 10. But Sabi has a jam'ul fillah, on the wazen of Sibyatun. Okay, we've already gone over and I wanna give you a break um, until the translation session. Uh, so uh, I will see you in a little bit, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakum khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.